With silver at $9 an ounce, you would pay $17 or $18 to receive your silver, and you'd wait anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks to get it. Had to pay up front. We can go back as recent as March of 2020 when the market collapsed. And what happened? I think it was pretty much coinciding, if I'm not mistaken. I think silver fell to 11 bucks. Um, mm -hmm. And you remember, you couldn't buy anything for short of 20 bucks anywhere. And you'd have to wait. And you didn't know there was uncertainty. So anytime that you distort reality, there is the unintended consequence on the physical market where there are people who understand what's really happening. The surge in gold and silver deliveries from COMEX highlights a profound shift pointing to significant flaws in the Western financial system. Central banks worldwide are intensifying their gold acquisition, with 2024 setting new records for gold purchases. The first half of this year saw record-breaking gold buying, surpassing previous years as central banks continued to boost their reserves despite soaring prices. In July alone, global central banks added 37 tons of gold a 206% increase from the previous month, marking the highest monthly total since January. Turkey has been a major player in this buying spree. Still, the standout trend is the massive withdrawal of physical gold and silver from exchanges like COMEX and the LBMA, reflecting strong and sustained demand for tangible assets amid growing market uncertainties. Andy Schechtman, CEO of Miles Franklin Precious Metals, highlights that over 4,142 gold contracts were delivered off COMEX in just one day. Such deliveries are no longer rare occurrences. They're becoming alarmingly frequent, highlighting a growing trend where big players take possession of physical metals rather than settling contracts in cash, which has been the norm. The same pattern is evident in the silver markets, where a recent single-day delivery saw approximately 19.1 million ounces of silver transferred. This level of physical drawdown is unprecedented and marks a radical departure from the market norms of just a few years ago when such large-scale withdrawals were almost unheard of. This quiet and methodical draining of Western reserves reflects a deliberate, calculated strategy unfolding without triggering a media frenzy or market upheaval. By carefully managing the pace of their actions, these entities avoid causing immediate panic or market shocks. Yet, they are steadily reshaping the balance of global financial power, subtly shifting influence away from the West. We will present clips from the discussion. But before we do, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications bell for more videos like this. We appreciate the support and hope you enjoy the video. We've talked a lot about this, you and I, over the years, but in 2008, when the market collapsed, um, we saw immediately the price of gold and silver get clobbered. And um, gold fell from 1,000 to 700 and silver from 21 to 9. And one would think in an environment where the price of, of asset A and B fell by 30 and 60% respectively, that there's no demand for that, that it's, it's being dumped globally and the price is just cascading down but that really wasn't the case because in 2008, every single mint across the globe was shut down. Ultimately, the U.S. mint was shut down seven or eight times that year and really was the model of inefficiency, much more so than they were the last three or four years. But it was much deeper than that. The Rand Mint in South Africa for the first time in its 60, 70 year history was sold out of product. The Perth Mint that summer, August on, took no new business. That's it. We're out. And the Austrian mint and the Canadian mint were anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks back ordered. The, the U.S. mint, at the time, I was very close with a man who's no longer at uh, Prudential Beige. He was the, the gentleman who nominated us to be an authorized reseller. And I, I would call him and talk with him quite a bit. And I remember having conversations with him and he would say, listen, man, you know, there's nothing you can do. We cannot take any orders right now. We'll let you know when you can. But everything's gone. <clears throat> now, what was unusual to me, and this has really shaped my 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 view of, of the physical world, is, is that the price was getting clobbered on paper, yet everything was gone. And it wasn't just that the mints were out of product. Refiners from, from Germany, or Ireland rather, would call me and say, listen, you know, I've seen you before online. I know who you are. I've seen your conferences. 
Uh, we have accounts at Delaware Depository, they would say. Uh, our traditional supply chains in Switzerland and Germany are gone. They're dried up. We'll take anything that you'll give us. I would lay in bed at night and say to my wife, I think we're going out of business. Um, I can't get anything. We can't place an order. And it also underscores, you know, no one was selling. Nobody. I mean, nobody. And, and the public wasn't selling, even with the price getting clobbered. Nobody was selling. Everyone was freaking out. And I would say, what are we going to do? You know, there's no secondary product. We've sold everything in our vault. We can't get anything. The U.S. Mint says, we'll call you. Don't call us. Uh, and then I get a, a phone call from David Morgan, uh, the David Morgan, who everyone knows, the silver guru, who I've been very tight with for a very long time. I owe David a lot. Um, he he helped me a lot in this industry back in the day. And, and this was another example. He called me up before he called anyone. And he said, I will hook you up if you want, before I let anyone else know about this. He said, there's a group here in Washington I've been working with forever uh, they've been recycling silver out of medical devices. They're called Pyromet. They'd like to throw their hat in the ring and they'll make 100 ounce bars. And these were the ugliest 100 ounce bars you've ever seen in your life. In fact, they just said 100 <laughs> ounces. They didn't say what? 100 ounce what? And for months, we, and then he talked to some other dealers, Pyromet 100 ounce bars were the only thing you could buy, literally, the only thing that you could buy in North America. And this probably would have been July, August. By October, early November, the Royal Canadian Mint and the U.S. Mint finally started to say, all right, we'll take orders. With silver at $9 an ounce, you would pay $17 or $18 to receive your silver, and you'd wait anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks to get it. You had to pay up front. We can go back as recent as March of 2020 when the market collapsed. And what happened? I think it was pretty much coinciding, if I'm not mistaken, I think. Silver fell to 11 bucks. Um, mm -hmm. And you remember, you couldn't buy anything for short of 20 bucks anywhere. And you'd have to wait. And you didn't know there was uncertainty. So anytime that you distort reality, there is the unintended consequence on the physical market where there are people who understand what's really happening. The value hunters say, I'll buy, thank you very much. And, and, and as the world is getting scarier, India's silver imports have surged dramatically, drawing global attention with record-breaking volumes. In 2023, India imported 3,625 metric tons of silver, and projections for 2024 suggest imports could soar to between 6,500 and 7,000 tons, driven by rising industrial demand. Data from the Trade Ministry revealed that India's silver imports in the first half of 2024 jumped to 4,554 tons, compared to just 560 tons during the same period last year. India imported a staggering 2,295 tons in February alone, up from 637 tons in January, a remarkable 260% month-over-month increase. Andy asserts that this massive demand reflects a broader strategy among Eastern nations like India and China, which are aggressively acquiring silver while often sidestepping traditional exchanges. China, for example, is purchasing silver door and concentrate directly from Latin American producers, paying premiums to refine the metal domestically and keeping these transactions largely out of public view. These actions highlight a calculated approach by these nations to exploit the West's suppression of precious metal prices, strategically draining global supplies, while avoiding Western price controls and regulatory scrutiny. The silver is more important than the West is leading on uh, to, and that is why you see China flying around the world buying unrefined silver and shipping it back. That's why you see India buying seven, eight hundred uh, million, met uh, thousand metric tons um, over the last uh you know, over the last um, three, four years. Uh, this is a situation where silver and gold are far more valuable than the currencies that purchase it. Much of the world understands this. We don't. And to try and play games and try and bottom feed and get lucky, it, it, it's not something that I think will, will go over very well, especially with such a small participation of the U.S. public, if gold and silver are doing what they have been doing, let's forget about silver because it's it's been held down. But look at gold. And silver will surpass gold in percentage terms, I believe, before it's all said and done. But if gold is doing what it's doing with positive real yield, 
forget about the nonsense out of the BLS and all that stuff, but a positive real yield, a strong dollar and, and waning participation by the West, what happens when that changes? What happens now that we're pivoting and we're going to lower rates and we're going to weaken the dollar and we're going to reignite inflation? And, you know, does the public wake up to this and start buying? It's rocket fuel. But much of what we see in the metals market is illusionary, unfortunately, because it's the antithesis of the system that has been allowed to rise unabated versus gold and silver, which have been stepped on. And although they continue to move, I would argue stepped on to the point where they're not allowed they have not been allowed to fully express themselves to to their real potential. Even gold, which has outpaced the S&P 500, you know, and doubled the performance of the 10-year Treasury, gold's 9.9% per year. It's up 20% this year. It's it's beating the tech industry. Where the hell is the, the mainstream media telling us? Yeah, right. But it's, people it's, need to understand about that chart. The red line represents um, the top four largest commercial banks and shorting the market and the green is the top eight. So it's a combination of the four plus mm -hmm. four more. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. You have eight banks that have the largest short position in any commodity. Look at oil. I mean, it's just a blip, right? Yep. Yeah, that, down there uh, two or three, three, a barrel three in four days, four days production. Yeah, this yeah. the, the y-axis is in days of production, yeah, global uh, days of production, yeah. Right, and so the question is, why would they do this? Uh, and I think you need to understand this. And, and and silver is far more strategic than they're letting on. It's used in all the high tech weaponry, and we're we're selling weapons around the globe. Look at the money they just again gave to the Ukraine. It's one hundred percent in weapons, and so they they need silver in order to create these weapons and that's the hidden secret that's the smoking gun and you know you go back and look at the the congressional um the congressional meetings that they had in, in the 40s and the 50s that talked about the massive amount of silver needed it for for military 200 million ounces a year they were talking about when weapons were nowhere near as sophisticated as they are now so you ask yourself why does silver do what it is why isn't it performing uh, you know, why is gold doing this and silver isn't? Why is it being stepped on? Why, why, why? Well, why are eight banks shorting this when China's flying around the globe buying unrefined silver and India's buying 10 times the amount that is available for sale in COMEX and two and a half times the amount that's available on the LBMA? Why? Because they know what we're doing. It's the exact same thing as the guy said in 2015 who runs the Shanghai Exchange, when China is allowed to speak at the table, the real price of gold will be known. It's the same thing as the guy who is now running the BRICS Grain Exchange. Uh, we produce more grain than the West does, and we cannot control the price. It's all controlled on COMEX, but this new grain exchange will change that. They know what we're doing with the metals, and they, they're beating us at our own stupidity. And if the public really knew just how stupid we are being by doing this, maybe there would be a little bit of a pushback, but the you know you guys all out there know more than 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 Fox News and and the people who are supposedly trying to tell the public what's happening. As central banks aggressively build their gold reserves and investors increasingly demand physical delivery, the pressure on Western exchanges is mounting. The ongoing depletion of physical reserves and Eastern countries bypassing traditional market controls suggests a possible revaluation of gold and silver. Persistent withdrawals could lead to liquidity shortages in Western markets, driving prices to reflect true supply and demand. Do you agree with Andy's predictions and analysis? Please share your thoughts on the video and the coming silver squeeze. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications bell for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in the next one.